Hello, everyone. This is Luis Rojas Lorzano. I am the director of the PhD in Science, Engineering, and Technology program at Nazarbayev University. With this introduction, I would like to welcome the series of videos in which I will have interview with peers and colleagues on the scientific method. We will be talking about their research, their problem, hypothesis, methodology, results, and future work. And also, of course, they will give us some hints about what a good researcher should be. With this, I would like to start the first episode with our PhD candidate, Veronika Dashkova, which will be shortly with us in our next video. Hi, Veronica. Thank you for coming to Hi, this Louise. series. And uh, I would like to start asking you about uh, your background and what brought you here to do the PhD. Um, so the moment I was actually um, thinking where to go to do my PhD, um, I had several options. I had options to go to uh, abroad to study in the um, some other international universities. Uh, but I chose to to stay here in Kazakhstan and to do my PhD at Nazarbayev University because um, uh, there are my professors that I uh, worked before with, uh, Professor Natalie Borteneva and Professor Ivan Varbyov. Uh, they work here. And also uh, the second um, motivation or the important aspect is that uh, Nazarbayev University is a very well equipped uh, university and it has all the uh, facilities that I need um, to have in my research. Because in my research I um, use specific uh, instruments and they all, uh, the university uh, has them all here. So I guess that was the main motivation. Great. And what is uh, the research question you are trying to address? Um, I'm studying uh, phytoplankton communities in, uh, in the rake, uh, lakes in Kazakhstan. And for that, we are also using uh, novel methods such as flow cytometry and imaging flow cytometry. So basically, uh, it's, this work consists of two, um, two steps or two, uh, part, two different parts. So the first part is the method, methodological part as we are um, applying new methods mm -hmm. and we try trying to uh, like um, to uh, advance these methods in application to uh, phytoplankton studies and the second aspect is the ecological questions which is also very important uh, we started with um, a phytoplankton uh, community is affected by the uh, environmental parameters and how uh, they are affected such as like salinity temperature so can you say that uh, this problem uh, is already addressed by other researchers in the world, but they have not uh, completed uh, to answer that question. So uh, in that in that part, my question is, mm -hmm. wh what has been done mm -hmm. uh, at, at, that, mm -hmm. at that particular problem? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, if we're talking about Kazakhstan, uh, we, we like research on, on lakes in general. And I think uh, this kind of uh, research hasn't been done in Kazakhstan before in terms of the uh, studying uh, phytoplankton on that scale because I'm studying uh, very um, uh, important endorheic lakes such as Lake Balkash, uh, such as uh, Aral Sea. Mm -hmm. um, um, so endorheic lakes means they're just closed basins. They are enclosed in the in the middle of the continent and they don't have any connection with the oceans. I so see. they will be very susceptible to any kind of uh, climate change impacts or uh, pollution. I see. Yeah. And what is the methodology you plan to to run to test uh, uh, the hypothesis in your problem? Mm -hmm. So, um, along with using traditional microscopes, we are trying to apply new methods that already there they've been used in uh, in the world in general. People are applying these methods to study phytoplankton. However, in Kazakhstan, we um, we ha we haven't done this yet. And so we're trying to apply these methods and uh, also develop new methods mm -hmm. like um, uh, spectral flow cytometry and apply them to study phytoplankton. And so far, I know you have done part of your work even internationally yes. and part in yeah. Kazakhstan. Yes. What have you obtained so far? 
Yeah. So um, in Kazakhstan, we uh, we completed several years of research on uh, Lake Balkash. Uh, it's uh, we like this lake and we go there every every year, <laughs> several times. Um, so we see some correlation because uh, Lake Balkash is um, is a polluted lake. Uh, there's a pollution going on, and we actually see some correlation between uh, phytoplankton structure and some pollutants some like heavy metal pollutants in Lake Balkash. Uh, in uh, Lake Aral, we also see some um, dependency, uh, correlation between phytoplankton structure and, for example, salinity, which is um, uh, important for Aral Sea because you know that it's a, it's a drying lake now and the salinity increased uh, significantly in recent years. So. Obviously, the phytoplankton communities will be adapting to that salinity levels. And uh, in terms of the international work, I also work uh, with my uh, international co-supervisor, Professor uh, Eric Jeppesen from Aarhus University in Denmark. And um, yes, they have an experimental, uh, experimental setup to study lakes and um, to study impact of climate change to the lakes. So basically, it's just, it's called mesocos. Mm -hmm. And they have this Mesikos facilities they've been running from uh, two, 2003. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and um, uh, we, we, what we're doing is we're trying to uh, study how phytoplankton reacts to different temperature settings uh, and to different uh, nutrient inputs like nitrogen or phosphorus. And so we actually found that uh, there is a certain response in phytoplankton communities uh, to um, variation, for example, in nitrogen load. That's actually uh, the nitrogen load was um, uh, studied uh, in this in this part of the period that I'm participating. Mm -hmm. So, so you are you are now a third year uh, PhD candidate. Yeah. So, what would you say is the next uh, part of your work before you wrap up and defend the thesis? Yeah. Is completing the experiments. What What would you say? Is yes, the uh, I guess it's a more statistical analysis. So, I have already collected uh, data the field uh, data and I just need to analyze them to sort of uh, to see what was going on it's like a like a, f a final check and uh, because um, mm, it's very difficult the systems are very complex and there are many factors that you need to consider it's not like you are in the experiment and you only have one parameter or two parameters you you have um, I don't know tens, uh, th not even like thousands parameters. Mm -hmm. So basically now uh, my goal is to identify which of those parameters are actually important for phytoplankton. Mm -hmm. And what do you think will be the impact uh, in the region uh, after you finish your PhD, what is your aspect? Uh, this this work is important uh, in general because it's the it's the knowledge it's the knowledge um, about the um, lake ecosystems that can be used in conservation of lakes. Uh, it can be also used uh, to predict future uh, climate change impacts on the lakes and uh, on the ecosystems, and also mitigate risks of uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. or other anthropogenic, for example, uh, pollution. Yeah, Veronica, as you know, the, the daily work of a PhD candidate, uh, student or candidate in your case, is quite uh, uh, demanding. What motivates you to come every day with energy to keep working and trying to find the answer to the question of yeah. your research. Yeah, it's it's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy, of course. PhD, um, PhD study is a long journey. And yes, you need to be motivated. Sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days. Uh, but I guess the main motivation is that I think my research is very important. And I really want to contribute uh, to the um, field, uh, to this uh, field of knowledge. And... Um, uh, it's. I think it's really important for my community, for Kazakhstan, and also important for international scientific communities because we, uh, in future and in general, we have uh, s um, similar problems we cope with. You know, so it doesn't matter which lake uh, it is. It can be. Uh, it can be uh, used. Um, the similar approach can be used to study it, and similar conclusions can be extrapolated to other lakes. In yeah. the world, 
And now for those young uh, students in high school or even in the university that are planning to come for a PhD, yeah. what would you say is your recommendation uh, for, for them or what do you think is the ideal uh, profile of the person who should embrace in a PhD? Yes, it's uh, because it's really... Um, uh, Uh, it's really not not easy to do it and you need to ha uh, to be highly motivated so you need to understand that you is 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 this is what you want to do uh, and uh, I think yes I think you just need to be highly motivated and understand all the um, not the not the risks but the problems uh, that you can uh, face in the future but in general uh, it's very interesting it's a very interesting long journey and uh, yes if a person is really uh, ambitious and really wants to contribute and do something useful and i think that's that's the way yes you need to do a phd thank you veronica for your time and your <laughs> yeah. thoughts and your ideas yes so. thank you louis for inviting me